It goes without saying that, as a professional, you read books to look for useful information. But the thing is that different books contain different amount of useful information. Everybody read useless and vague books. Some of them even have uh, become favorite ones, but it doesn't change anything. Today we will discuss what is useful information for a professional, what is an instrumental value of a book, and what is a concentrated book. First of all, useful information for a professional is a piece of information that he or she can apply to solve professional problems. For example, I want to train public speaking skills. An article on types of speakers' styles is useless. It simply has no recommendations for solving my problem. On the contrary, the acting textbook is very helpful because there are a lot of exercises that improve public speaking skills. But why one type of information is helpful while the other is useless? To understand that, we need a concept of a causal link. Only causal link can be applied to solve professional problems. What does it mean? Let's consider some examples. The first example is a causal link that expresses a mistake. If a scientist doesn't attend conferences and doesn't discuss his work with colleagues, uh, such a lack of feedback increases the risks of relevant and wrong results in the future. The cause is uh, ignoring conferences and scientific communication. The consequence is an increased risk of irrelevant results. An example of a causal link that expresses a solution. Short and, ex and intensive physical exercises before public speaking relax your muscles and consequently makes performance more vibrant and catchy. The cause is physical exercises, the consequence uh, is a more vibrant performance. So if you have a causal link, you have a cause and a consequence that can be verified and become accredited knowledge. If you have only one part of this relationship, only cause or only consequence, it's just an opinion, just like Physical exercises are good for public speaking. Immediately one question arises. Why are they good? We are interested not in all possible causal links, but in those that can be applied by professionals. This is the criterion. So, let us call a piece of information with such a useful causal link a source material. In other words, the source material is a piece of information with useful professional applications. There are three obligatory attributes of source material. Firstly, a causal link mustn't be obvious. Here people always ask what should be considered obvious. Let me explain. If something is obvious for a student, then it's obvious for everyone. So the sentence, if you shoot a man, he will die, is an example of an obvious causal link. This is not the source material. Secondly, a causal link must be repeatable, something that we can reproduce with the same result. Physical exercises can be reproduced. All actions can be reproduced. Uh, on the contrary, slogans like think positive can be reproduced by different people with the same result. This recommendation is too vague. Thirdly, a causal link must express how the situation has changed, must express its transformation. Situation number one, a scientist that takes part in conferences. Situation number two, a scientist with no scientific communication and risks of relevant results increased. Here we can formulate that transformation. Let's have a look at the following quote. Nikola Tesla was an inventor and an electrical engineer. He is best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electricity system. Uh, as we see, there, there is no transformation here, just simple facts. If you have found a piece of information with a not obvious, repeatable causal link, if it expresses how the situation changed, then we found the source material. Let's consider an example of a simple advertising billboards trick in the USA. In the 1930s, it was described by Ilfi and Petrov in their book American Road Trip. There were identical yellow placards with black letters on them. They contained questions for travelers, and in 100 feet there were answers to them. Travelers hoped uh, to exact a few useful facts, but all they could find was the name of shaving soap on the same kind of little yellow placard. This trick is not so obvious. It can be reproduced and it expresses the transformation of the traveler who found out and remembered the shaving soap name. So only the source material has an instrumental value for a professional. Recommendations can be derived only from source material by definition. For instance, what to do or what not to do to succeed. Now it's easy to see what is an instrumental value of a book. 
the instrumental value of a book is the amount of source material, that is, a number of recommendations that can be derived from the book. Unfortunately, plenty of books have a few pieces of source material, or have no source material at all. These are useless books. If there is a lot of source material in a book, then it's a concentrated book, a book of high instrumental value. For example, the book Public Opinion by Walter Lippmann is very useful for those who are interested in PR techniques. Such books should be reread. These books solve readers' problems. Usually, there is no hope to find a concentrated book on your particular topic. We have to admit it, but that is a rare case, unfortunately. But our professionals need source material to do their job well. So he or she needs to read a lot of books and extract source material from them. If you want to know more, check out the other concentrated videos on the channel and wait for the next video where we will talk about reading strategies. Thank you.